Thank you. We will reconvene to public session and we will have a roll call. All board members are present and accounted for except for the student trustee. And public comment announcement. Pursuant to board policy 2350, public comment may be limited to five minutes per person. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter on the closed session agenda or open session agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting at which the agenda item is called. Public comment cards are available at the information table at the rear of the boardroom from the recording secretary or online. Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Buffalo, will you please lead us? Please stand, place your hand over your heart and begin with me. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. May your motion to approve the agenda. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 10, presentation 10.1. Annual report of the Retirement Board Authority, RBOA. All right, I'll be first here. Uh, my name is Mark Payne. Uh, I'm one of the advisors at Morgan Stanley uh, with my partner, Carrie Allison. That's okay. Okay, I'll be tag teaming this with uh, Sarah Miller. Here's your current retirement board of authority members, just Sarah Miller, uh, one vacant spot, and then Mr. Michael Adams. Here's uh, just an overview of the retirement board of authority responsibilities. I won't go through all these. This is a Rosalind Washington Keenan slide, um, but provides oversight to the program, adopts and executes the terms of the trust, requires Brown Act meetings, creating transparency. Um, you can reference this later. I'll, I'll keep, keep moving. Um, I know everyone wants to get to the performance of the trust. Here's an overview of the team. Um, there are three partners involved with the trust. First is Keenan Financial Services and Rosalind Washington. They handle all of the administrative tasks and paperwork along with the trust. Benefit Trust Company out of Kansas City. They are your custodian and discretionary trustee. And last but not least, my team at Morgan Stanley, me, um, our assistant, Helen Sandoval, and my senior partner, Carrie Allison. Okay, performance of the trust. Um, Portfolio value as of the last day of 2020, uh, 3,587,194.85. Annual contributions into the trust, $387,113. Uh, no withdrawals, change in market value. This is your investment earnings in 2020, $380,835.57. Annual uh, portfolio fees, $28,778.37. Portfolio value as of the end of the first quarter was $3,634,512. And I went into the account yesterday to give you an update on the yesterday's close. Let's see, I've got it right here. There's actually another 100,000 higher. So you're at three. 3,740,390 as of yesterday's close. Okay, here's the percentage weighted return net of fees for your trust. Uh, 2020 was 15.14%, annualized was 7.21%. Uh, the next are our indexes. The S&P 500 was up 18.38, annualized 13.57. The E fees are international index, uh, 7.82, annualized 5.24. Barclays aggregate is our fixed income benchmark, up seven and a half in 2020, annualized 4.09. Uh, 
Uh, Barclays Global is the same thing, just global bonds, uh, 9.2 in 2020, annualized was 7.39. Okay, I'll hand it over to Sarah. Hello. Um, so our 2020 accomplishments were to uh, review the investment policy, which we did. Um, there wasn't any major changes to the investment policy, just um, some standard language changes. Also, Keenan provided a, writ a written summary of the substantive plan. And so what that is, is just an archive of all the records on flash drives. And that's re required by uh, a government accounting standards board, accounting standards. We're also continued to fund the irrevocable trust uh, to lower the liability. And that was about 387,000. And we uh, met twice in the year. Our goals are to continue to have Keenan uh, provide that written summary, uh, to continue um, to provide funding annually to the trust. And also we would like to select a vendor for, the, for another trust for a pension stabilization. Um, also investment policy development around that and funding planning. Um, uh, at the last meeting, board meeting, um, our auditors went over the, uh, the trust fund audit. Um, we have 2.7 as of 630, 2020, um, it was at 2.7. Of course, Mark has given you a more updated amount. Um, the auditing firm reviewed everything and there were no findings. Do you have any questions for us? Any questions or comments from the board? I think the board members are doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, item 10.2, COVID update. Sorry. Hi, good evening. My name is Rhonda Burgess. I'm here tonight with uh, Aaron Hitchman and Terry Cleveland to give you an update on COVID, uh, the status at AVC. Now, we receive a lot of guidance from different agencies, national, state, and county, and the agencies, they make changes very rapidly. Uh, most recently, from the California Department of Health, uh, they moved Los Angeles County into the yellow tier. Um, and along with that came a bunch of health orders from Los Angeles County Health Department. And with the yellow tier, we still have a lot of safety modifications, including wearing face masks, uh, social distancing, and washing hands. And everybody age 16 and older is eligible now to receive a vaccination. At AVC, there have been no new positive on-campus cases reported in the past four weeks. That's huge. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, total on-campus positive cases are 101. And it's really important to note that this number encompasses students, staff, construction workers, and vendors. And it reflects only people that tested positive and were on campus within 14 days of their positive test or from when the symptoms began. Uh, we provide a weekly update to our staff and students um, through email and any questions that they have uh, or possible cases should be reported to contact hr at abc.edu. And we are currently, uh, the campus is closed this week. There's no instruction. Uh, students are able to come to campus if they have made an appointment and employees are working on a staggered basis. 
Next week, uh, instruction opens again and will be limited to in-person. It will have limited in-person and virtual. Uh, they can come on campus if they are in a scheduled class or they have an appointment. And employees are working again on a staggered basis and athletic teams are resuming practice and games and continuing to do COVID testing prior. Uh, this is a list of the health orders or pieces of the health orders that affect institutes of higher education. And I won't go through all of them, uh, but they basically give a bigger capacity. We provide signage on all of the doors for our employees, um, students, and visitors. Uh, we post the uh, QR code there so they can pull up any of the current county health orders. We ask that all students and employees do a self-screening survey when they come to campus. If they plan to be on campus that day, they should complete it. It's online, uh, asks them a series of questions uh, to clear them to be on campus and visitors should read all of the postings uh, on the doors before they come on campus. Face coverings are still required. What's important here is that outdoors, uh, we are able to be without a mask at certain times. Uh, when you're alone, uh, when you're with members of your household, with a small group of vaccinated people or a small group of people that are not fully vaccinated, but are not at high risk. Uh, outdoors, when you're around a, a group of people or not able to maintain social distancing, you should still wear a mask as well as indoors. Uh, they continue to note social uh, distancing and hygiene. And these are additional resources that can be accessed on our website. Uh, there is a guide for students and employees and a lot of vaccination resources where they can make appointments. And we look forward at AVC to, as rates go down, vaccinations go up, guidance and protocols change. We look forward to slowly returning uh, students and employees back to campus. Thank you. I will turn it over to Erin Hitchman. Thank you. Good evening. Where'd it go? Um, I'm Erin Hitchman. I'm the facilities planning supervisor, and I'm involved in preparing the campus for the return of the students and the faculty and staff. So to get the campus ready, we've done plexiglass barriers and dividers in classrooms and labs that are being utilized for summer 2021. Um, we're not using the whole campus. We're using a fair amount of classes, but we're preparing those classes specifically for our campus return. Faculty and staff offices, cubicles, service areas, and other common areas, such as out here um, in student services, we've plexiglassed a large majority of all the reception counter stations and provided individual barriers, such as the ones between you or staff returning that may be close to each other. Social distancing signages, signage has increased. So we're doing the six foot signage, um, the directional signage for entrances and exit. So we have a designated entrance and an exit in all the classrooms um, and entrances and exits for buildings. Additional hand sanitizing stations have been added to all buildings across campus. I think you can't go more than 12 feet without seeing them. Revised custodial routes to address bathrooms in high touch point areas and higher utilized areas. Sanitation of services between classes. We actually have uh, custodians between classes that will be sanitizing the rooms and the desks. Deep cleaning by the evening shift. The evening shift will be covering all the de deep cleaning on all the classes and the staff areas. Personal protection equipment is being deployed on an ongoing basis. Um, masks, sanitizer, disinfectant wipes to staff and faculty. We actually have uh, an email that they can email us and we will deploy it to them, bring it to them or they can pick it up from facilities. Um, we also have deployed it to all classrooms and labs being utilized for summer 2021. Do you have any questions? Questions or comments from the board? Thank you. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Terry Cleveland. Good evening, I'm Terry Cleveland, Director of Risk Management. And we contracted uh, with the employee or the uh, Environmental Assistance Group to do a COVID guideline inspection as prorated and uh, brought about by the ASHRAE. And ASHRAE stands for 
the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers. The Environmental Assistance Group visited about 212 buildings on three different facilities, the main campus, the Palmdale Center, and the Fox Field site. And they found very little that needed attention. And that is almost complete at this point in time. But what they did find was that the fresh air dampers uh, at maximum openings per the outdoor temperatures, you can't open them 100% or you're gonna have very hot air in the summertime and very cold air in the wintertime. But they're open about 15 to 20%, which gives us four to six room air changes per hour. Uh, MERV 13 filters are to be installed in the units capable of using them. And the MERV 13 filters are on order at this point in time, although some of the units are equipped with those. We're not going to have anything less than MERV 11 filters. And that stands for the uh, maximum efficiency reporting value on the filters. The cooling towers are clean overall. There was some minor corrosion found outside of the pipes and routine water treatment continues. The HVAC units are serviced and clean. And this includes the filters, the filter seals, the return air plenums, the belts, the condensate pans, et cetera. And some room ceiling tiles need to be replaced. And when this was prepared, the replacement tiles were on order. They've since arrived. And most of those are in place, about 75% of the ones that needed to be replaced. So all in all, very little needs to be done. Um, thank you for your kind attention. We hope you have a good evening. Are there any questions for any of us? Questions or comments from any of the team? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to item 11, recognition of student leaders, 11.1. Recognition of the 2020-2021 Associate Student Organization Leaders by Dr. Jill Zimmerman. The button. Oh. It is a pleasure to come every year before the board to uh, recognize our student leaders. I'm Dr. Jill Zimmerman, our student Dean of Student Life and Services, and it is my pleasure to always work with our students in trying to represent their interests in all matters affecting the college. And this year during COVID has been particularly difficult, and yet our students have particularly continued to shine. Unfortunately, we only have a few here, two of them. Um, um, aren't able to come in person. But I want to take a minute and introduce um, our esteemed student body president. Cameron has been terrific in being at every meeting, presenting all things that need to be done, and is making sure that he continues to do well, both in his academic pursuits and in ensuring that the students are well heard on campus. So it is with great pleasure and appreciation for his service and dedication, I present this plaque and certificate to Cameron Zapetta. Under his leadership, we were able to have uh, a couple of students who served outstandingly and they, two of them are with us tonight. Uh, Rocio Rivera, uh, you'll see a lot of her, but she has been fantastic in representing the students, going on committees, and making sure that uh, particular things like our student uh, civic engagement, very involved, helping to get all of those things going. And so I present to you, and you will hear her name in a minute again, um, the outgoing uh, Vice President of ASO for Special Projects for the 2021 school year. And um, drum roll will be set in a minute for her next role that she'll be playing in serving our students. Thank you. The two other folks will not be with us tonight, but I want to make sure that we are well aware, and I um, missed the flat. Can you bring that to me? As difficult as this year has been, um, 
one of our students has stepped up and has served exceptionally well. This goes into the next um, phase of what we've done through the involvement of all of our students, particularly with our student trustee is being a significant role in that place. Um, we've been able to accomplish a lot of things. I don't wanna say anything because it's their report. I'm gonna let them tell you all about the great things they've done. But I wanna to present to you the work that Samuel Zhu has done. He is not only as a student trustee has taken on leadership across campus to hear some about the things that we have done and served our students. And so Samuel Zhu, who by the way, is the very first SOAR student to serve in the student trustee role. Um, and he will be uh, graduating both high school and with his AA. Um, well, you've already graduated with your AA, but your high school graduation will be at the end of May. So Samuel, on behalf of all of us and all of the students that you represented, thank you so much for your service. You've done an outstanding job. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can do those years. She done with the this part. Moving on to 11.2, recognition of outgoing student trustees, Jamo Ju. It just did that. 11.3, administer oath of office to newly elected student trustee. Lucia, we're going to stand this far apart, which is really unfortunate because it's easier to confuse you if I'm standing right in front of you. So if you would please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Rosia Rivera. Do solemnly swear that I will support. Do solemnly swear that I will support. And defend the Constitution of the United States. And defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. And I will well and faithfully discharge the duties, the duties of which I will, I'm about to enter. Outstanding. Congratulations. You. you and Samuel can trade seats. Very good. Welcome aboard. And thank you, Samuel. Yes, thank you, Samuel. Great job. Thank you. Moving on the agenda, we are at 12.1, uh, approval of resolution number 20-21-8, recognizing Animal Valley College retirees. This is always a little bit of a um, celebratory but bittersweet moment as we recognize people who have given a considerable portion of their lives and, and uh, attention to the college. And this resolution um, passed by the Board of Trustees says, whereas the Antelope Valley Community College District fulfills its mission to the community through the strength of its employees. And whereas Antelope Valley College has thrived throughout its 91 year history because of the talent, skill, professionalism, and compassion of its faculty and staff. And whereas Antelope Valley College is recognized as a leader and innovator on state, regional, and national platforms. And whereas Antelope Valley College enjoys the loyalty and dedication of its employees serving students and the community. And whereas Antelope Valley College has been well served by the following individuals. Denise Anderson, 2001 to 2021. Lee Berthold, 1982 to 2020. Ed Meyer, Beyer, 
2000 to 2021. Fred Bianchi, 2010 to 2021. Ronald Chapman, 2002 to 2021. David Earl, 2000 to 2021. Deborah Feichert, 1987 to 2021. Norman Hines, 2011 to 2021. Richard Hoffman, 2003 to 2020. Michelle Howe, Micheline Howe, excuse me, 2001 to 2020. Doug Jensen, 2000 to 2021. Laurel Johnson, 1987 to 2021. Shannon Nab, 1996 to 2021. Susan Knapp, 1996 to 2021. Watson Lee, 2005 to 2021. James Lear, 2007 to 2020. Larry Mitchell, 2000 to 2021. David Newman, 1990 to 2021. Gary Rogenstein, 2007 to 2021. Jeannie Tro, 1971 to 2021, 50 years. Les Uhazy, 1988 to 2020. Wilda Wallace, 2000 to 2020. Deborah Wheelbacher, 2017 to 2020. Tim Wiley, 1997 to 2021. Tina Wilson, 2001 to 2021, and Diana Wright, 2004 to 2020, representing collectively 589 years of unselfish dedication. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Antelope Valley College Board of Trustees that each of the aforementioned is recognized and congratulated for their outstanding service and further be it resolved that each of the aforementioned is thanked for their service with its deepest gratitude, the Board of Trustees wishes them every happiness in their respective retirements. Adopted this 10th day of May, 2021. What? No, I know. Okay, moving on. Item 13, 13.1, open forum on non-agenda items. We have no speaker cards for non-agenda items. Item 14, 14.1, report of closed session action. There was no reportable action taken in closed session. Item 15, consent agenda. I do have a public comment card for a consent agenda item 15.3, panel Ford. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. Or I should say, I'm happy to be back. <laughs> um, I'm Pamela Ford, president of the Classified Union. And I'm here tonight in good trouble. I would like clarification from you as board members regarding upward promotions of administrators. As you are aware, lately there are many new positions born out of reorganizations to higher level positions, whether the individuals meet the minimum qualifications or degrees um, by passing uh, years of processes here on campus approved through the participatory governance process. I have inquired of the president concerning this concern and he's been responsive. Um, in his written response to me, he said the incumbent is agreeing to additional responsibilities and has not vacated their position. A position is not created in this process. This is in part how flattening can occur. In the past, the reclassification process has moved folks from one position to another that does not exist at the time without recruitment. He also cited Title V, which reads currently occupied by an incumbent is upgraded reclassified or renamed without significantly altering the duties being performed by the individual. But one would think with a practically seven step increase, there would be some significant changes to duties. Comparing upgrading positions through reorganization to a, to a reclassification is a misnomer because there is a legitimate identifiable process in place for reclassifications. Classified have to apply through the reclassification process. 
If they do not meet the criteria, they're not reclassified. If there is a reclassification, if there is a reclassification, the salary adjusted is adjusted only up 5% over their current salary. And we've been debating that for years with the district. And the president rarely allows new positions through the classified reclassification process to be created through that process, um, which would deny the, and a lot of times he denies the committee's recommendations for reclassifications. Reviewing the two positions presented in the personnel schedule tonight and what is being referred to as change of status, or is that another name for reclassification? New titles have been created. The salary is well above 5%, the classified are held to, and have, a, have minimum qualifications been considered? And are there job descriptions for these positions? To be clear, I am not questioning upward mobility. I think it's great. I am questioning why all are not benefiting from a process and why it's not a diverse, equitable process in which anyone can apply. And if minimum qualifications are gonna be waived for some, then they should be waived for all. There is an interim administration position that is coming up for hire. And I've been asking about this for a while, but not for the reason that people think. Now this position was not required to go through the process either. Yet the individual in the position has to apply and go through the process. So it makes me question, why do some individuals have to go through the process for these upper level positions and others don't? Why aren't classified allowed to benefit from their own reclassification, which affords upward mobility? Why does it appear that at the, that at, up, at the upper level of management, Positions are beginning to re resemble snow-capped mountains as black people don't seem to benefit from these unknown processes through which reorganizations are moving people up to higher level positions. As a board, e inclusion, equality and diversity and promotions and hiring practices must be important to you. So I have prepared a request for information for you in the hopes that you can provide some clarity because I really don't understand how these processes work as they change, it seems like each time there's a reorganization. And I anticipate your written response. Do I give these to Patty or? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving on, may I hear a motion to approve consent agenda items by unanimous consent. Discussion? Advice? I approve. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Moving on to action item 16.1. Approval of resolution number 20-20-9, classified employee week of May 17th, 2021. May I hear a motion? Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. 16.2, approval of academic policies and procedures, AP and P committee's recommendations, of course, listing. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.3, approval of consultant service agreements, to teach foster and kinship education program, specialized training classes for 2021 to 2026, may hear a motion. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.4, approval of service agreement with mentor and match and the Enel Valley College for licensed software for a mentor networking platform, may hear a motion. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.5, approval to begin no negotiations with Barnes and Noble College for operation of Marauder Bookstore. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. 
Discussion? Mr. President? Yes. Uh, I'd like to make some remarks on this, please. Certainly. Uh, first of all, I reviewed the uh, applications and bids for the positions. There were about six entities that applied to run the bookstore. I also reviewed the uh, operations of the bookstore, uh, where the income was about the same as it was uh, last year. Uh, I was unable to review the bids itself. It referred you to another website, and the website only had statistics for the year 2016 to 2017. So they referred you to a website that didn't have the information about the bids. Uh, I was a little upset about that. However, my experience uh, with Barnes & Nobles goes way back when I was a student uh, online for a master's degree from Boston University several years ago. And I had to order my books uh, from Barnes & Noble Boston University Bookstore. And they did a superb, superb job. And also the retail store that they have in Palmdale is exceptional too. So I think very highly of Barnes & Noble and they're all over the country. And I, I think they are looking over all the people that fitted for the bookstore. I think they are, in my opinion, the best fit for us. So uh, I hope that we can hire them and we have a long future with Barnes and Noble. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Passes with five yes votes. Item 16.6, .6, approval of associate student organization budget for 2021-2022. Mayor, a motion. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 16.7, .7, approval of amendment number one to agreement with auditing firm Kosolias, Wilson, Dominguez, and Levitt, CWDL. Certified public accountants. May your motion. Okay. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 16.8 approval to use the Sierra School Equipment Cooperative Agreement through the Arvin Union School District. May your motion. Okay. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 16.9, approval to renew master agreements for ongoing construction management services. May I hear a motion? Okay. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 16.10, approval of contract increase to Kruger Benson Zemer Architects Incorporated for architectural and engineering services. Palmdale Technology Project 18 012. May I hear a motion? Mm -hmm. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.11. Approval of contract with Cougar Benson Zemer Architects Incorporated for architectural and engineering services, Palmdale Center, Katie Lab 21 15. May I hear a motion? Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.12, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the infrastructure project 17-29, Taft Electric Company. May I hear a motion? Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes, 16.13. Approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the infrastructure project 17-29, Taft Electric Company. May I hear a motion? Approved. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.14, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the swing space phase one project 17-30, 
class leasing LLC. Can you hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.15, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the campus security project 17-40, Barbario DBA West Coast Service Company. May I hear a motion? Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.16, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the campus security project 17-40, diversified construction with solutions, DCS. May I hear a motion? Good Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.17, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the campus security project 17-40, the Sotolo cabinets. May I hear a motion? So Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.18. Approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Marauder Complex Project 17 41 for class leasing LLC. May I hear a motion? So Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.19. Approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Marauder Complex Project 17 41 to SKC Company. Any your motion? So Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.20. Approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Fox Field Hangar Project 20 12 BRN Company. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.21. Approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Fox Field Hangar Project 20 12. To Rawlings Mechanical Corporation. May I hear a motion? So moved. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.22 approval to file notice of completion, resolution of acceptance on the Foxfield Hangar Project 20 12 to tap electric. May I hear a motion? So Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.23, approval of change orders for infrastructure 17-29 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 16.24, Approval of change orders for Sage Hall 17 31 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.25. Approval of change orders for student services 17 37 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? So moved. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.26. Approval of change orders for campus security projects 17 40 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Okay. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.27. Approval of change orders for Foxfield Hangar Project 20 12 with strong workforce and redevelopment funds. May I hear a motion? Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.28. Approval of project assignment amendment to Nolan Construction Services 
for Project Inspector of Record Services, Foxfield Improvements Project 17 9. May I hear a motion? Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.29. Approval of project assignment amendment to Colombo Construction Company Incorporated for construction management services. Campus security project, building project 17-40 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five guest votes. 16.30. Approval of project assignment of amendment to Nolan Construction Services for Project Inspector of Record Services, Marauder Complex Project 17 41 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 16.31. Approval of project assignment amendment to Lundgren Management for Construction Management Services, Marauder Complex 17 41 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 17, information items. You have in your packet 17.1, board planning and initiatives, 17.2, Animal Valley Community College District Facility Services Monthly Report, 17.3, revision of Administrative Procedure 3100, organizational structure, and 17.4, revision of Administrative Procedure 5040, Student Records, Directory Information and Privacy. Item 18, Reports and Announcements, Academic Senate. Dan Ryder. Good evening. It's good to see you this evening. Good evening, members of the board and President Knudsen. Um, just a, a handful of items. First, we recognize the achievements and the success of the graduating class of 2021. We appreciate all the effort and the commencement that occurred last week. Um, this has been a year like no, under, no other. And uh, we celebrate the students' achievements and the support that the AVC community has offered in helping these students move forward in their personal and academic goals. But we also recognize the contributions of the student leaders. The Senate expresses a sincere thank you and well wishes to student uh, trustee Samasu and welcomes the newly elected student trustee, Rocio Rivera. We recognize the efforts and accomplishments of the retiring faculty employees who are listed as part of the consent agenda in 12.1 and as part of the resolution that was shared with us. We, we join with the board and the ABC community in celebrating their contributions and wishing all the right retirees well in the next chapter of their lives. Finally, at the most recent Senate meeting, a resolution had been brought to the floor and was discussed over a few weeks and was approved this past meeting. The resolution entitled Academic Senate Statement of Administrative Actions Regarding COVID-19, I share with you the resolved, quote, resolved that the academic, excuse me, resolved that the Antelope Valley College Academic Senate reminds the Antelope Valley Community College District Board of Trustees and the administration of the responsibility to work collegially with both the unions, the academic senate, and the associated student organization, close quote. I am encouraged by the increased communication in regards to the COVID-19 and the preparation for fall and summer, as evidenced by agenda item 10.2. I recognize the great work that we are all involved with and accomplishing only that can be done together. While we may differ at times on approaches, we are on the same team. The Senate will strive to work with all the campus constituents as we look forward to 21-22 academic year in fulfilling our responsibility as well to be part of that process of collegiate consultation. Thank you. Thank you. Item 18.2, Annal Valley College Federation of Teachers, Dr. Aurora Bird. Good evening, and I apologize. I am going to leave my mask on um, for a personal reason tonight. Thank you. Would it help if I spoke quite a bit louder? You're, you're perfectly clear. Yes, okay. 
Good evening, President Knudsen and members of the Board of Trustees. I'd like to start by thanking ABC's classified employees tonight. As faculty, we would not be able to do our jobs without the help, collaboration, and friendship of the classified staff. I know it's been a tough year for everybody, but we've really relied on them, and I know it's a recognition week for them. So thank you to all of the classified employees. I also wanted to thank Samuel Zhu and the outgoing ASO leadership for their outstanding service this year as well as give a congratulations and welcome to the new student trustee. On a technical note, I would like to state that the district and the Federation continue negotiations related to the effects of a return to campus for summer 2021. As President Knudsen announced his retirement at last month's meeting, I would like to take a moment to encourage the board to pursue a full hiring process for the AVC president position as stipulated in BP and AP 7120 versus appointing an interim president. It is important that hiring ensure not just that a qualified person is placed in the position, but that all individuals on campus who meet the qualifications for a given job title have the chance to apply and be considered. AVC's philosophy states that the college is committed to equal educational opportunity, as well as respect for human dignity. When individuals are promoted or offered positions without a complete hiring process, it is possible that qualified individuals are overlooked and not given the opportunity for advancement or promotion. This leads to a climate where employees may feel that they are not treated with human dignity and that they do not have equal opportunity. This may lead some employees to question the college's commitment to transparency. We try to give all of our students the opportunity to succeed, spread their wings and thrive by committing to equal educational opportunity for them. We should be able to do the same for our employees whether faculty, classified, CMS, or administrators. The process of hiring a new president is a chance for the college to not just talk the talk as an equal opportunity employer, but to truly walk the walk of equal opportunity employment and commitment to diversity. On a happier note, I'd like to give my congratulations to this year's retirees. These individuals have given many years of service to the college and community, and I wish them a healthy, fulfilling retirement. Thank you and see you next month. Thank you. Item 18.3, Animal Valley College Federation of Classified Employees, Pamela Ford. I just have a few announcements. Aurora, thank you for your acknowledgement of the classified and also the district for your board for your recognition. Um, elections have been held and officers and, and appointments will be announced at our next unit meeting, which is this week. I attended the anti-Asian uh, pan-American hate workshop. It was moving and emotional to hear the students' experiences. And it, and it was, I'm not gonna say it was enlightening, but it was, it lent a lot of perspective in what all groups that are minorities experience. And hopefully we can all work together, together collectively to improve things. Um, with the contract with Barnes and Noble moving forward, we're anticipating positive negotiations with the district to find placement for our loyal bookstore employees so that they can maintain their salaries and benefits and many more years of service with the district. Also, congratulations to the graduating students and also retiring employees as they celebrate their, as we celebrate their loyalty and commitment and their contributions to the campus. Thank you. Thank you. Item 18.4, confidential manager, supervisory administrator, employee, Bill Carlson. No report at this time. Thank you very much. Item 18.5, Associate Student Organization, Cameron Zepeda. Uh, 
Good afternoon, President, uh, good evening, President Knudsen and board. Uh, as many of you know, tonight is my last board meeting, my last night serving as ASR president. Uh, so first and foremost, I wanna thank the students. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be your president for the last year and letting me be your voice. Um, I wanna thank um, all the incoming officers for choosing to sit in these new positions. It is going to be somewhat difficult, but as we have shown, we can manage. I also wanna say thank you to all of our ASO officers who have served with me in the last year. Uh, thank you so much for supporting we as an organization cannot have survived without each other. Uh, I wanna take this last moment to offer any students who are still attending ABC, please join ASO. It is much more than just working with our teachers and with our classified uh, employees, but it is also a place where you can harbor true friendship. You can learn a whole bunch of new experiences um, and you can learn a whole bunch more about how this college operates uh, and where student voices are needed in this college and where they are currently being held. Um, so with that, thank you all for this wonderful year. Thank you and thank you for your service, Ben. 18.6, Animal Valley College Foundation, Diane Knipple is not present. 18.7, Office of Superintendent President, Mr. Ed Knudsen. Yeah, just a few quick things if I might. Um, first of all, I would like to recognize the classified staff and during the classified appreciation week, we do this every year and Pam, I'm sorry, we can't do it live and in person like we usually do. Uh, this is second year in a row, but I promise you next year, we're gonna have a party. Um, wanna welcome our new trustee, Rocio. Thank you for stepping up and uh, taking the challenge. I think you'll find this year to be a lot of fun and enlightening um, as we move through it. And also I wanna thank Samuel, I guess he has left for his service. Samuel came in in the middle of the year, kind of under tense circumstances and did a great job of filling in. Um, I wanna commend all student leaders in particular to Cameron. Um, I appreciate your, your dedication and your desire and your balanced perspective in approaching and solving problems. Thank you. And I wanna especially commend the COVID teams across campus. Uh, we have instructional continuity team. We've got an IHE team that's been meeting with the, all the folks in m &O, the various people that have participated in not only gathering the data, but reporting it and getting us to the place where we are today. And I can't tell you that that has been a Herculean event uh, for all of these groups and the information and the data changed sometimes daily but at least weekly. So responding to those things I have greatly appreciated. Um, just a couple of things on some of the construction things that you saw on, uh, on the list tonight. The good news is when you see a completion notice, that means we're done with that particular project. And so we've gotten quite a few things done here on campus. I'm looking forward to opening Sage Hall in October. Um, the glass is in. If you haven't been over by there, it's, uh, it's just due east of Lecture Hall, and it is uh, a fine-looking building. Looking forward to opening that in October. Looking forward to opening Discovery Lab in December, and uh, that's our new CTE building, which will be state-of-the-art with advanced manufacturing and many things. One thing that was on the agenda tonight, the Katie Lab uh, and the architecture firms asked for tenant improvements in the building that we have over in Palmdale. This is our partnership with the Air Force Research Lab in a makerspace. And this Katie stands for the California Aerospace Technology Institute of Excellence. And it was, uh, has been recognized by the state legislature. So we are starting to get active for that. And it will provide services to everybody from high school uh, engineers, uh, hoping to be engineers to uh, research faculty in engineering and uh, industry practitioners and postdoc work. So we're looking forward to opening that as well. We've opened several buildings, Fox Fields open, Security's open, uh, Marauder Complex will open towards the end of the year uh, as well. And we're moving forward and the campus is on its way to being set for the next 50 plus years. And so I thank everybody for their hard work and diligence in that. And I'm looking forward to having more students on campus beginning on Monday. We've had uh, 
students in the critical workforce areas of health science, all the health sciences, aviation and transportation on, and uh, fire sciences on campus since last summer. Um, but I'm looking forward to having more students on campus beginning on Monday and God willing, we're all back August 16th. Thank you. Thank you. Item 18.8, board member comments. Ms. Rivera. Thank you. I'd like to thank you all for welcoming me. I am excited to represent and serve all students at ABC. I would like, also like to congratulate all graduating students and to congratulate all students for finishing their finals. And good luck to all students starting classes on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Harvey. Yes, I would also like to uh, congratulate the graduates. I also want to say congratulations to the retirees. It is something to uh, work their life and then uh, take their time to retire. So I am wishing them the very best. Thank you. Mr. Reeves. I had occasion the other night to watch the virtual graduation ceremony from beginning to end. And I want to commend all the graduates. I want to commend uh, President Knudsen and uh, also the excellent speech by given, given by Dr. Van Ryder. It made me extremely proud because that's why we're up here, to give students and, of this university and college a chance to move forward in their lives and do something great. And that's a great feeling to be up here. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gaines. Um, first, I'd like to say to all of the retirees that Pres President Knudsen read tonight, uh, an incredible list of uh, people who have served this community college over how many years, Ed, 500 some years total. Uh, uh, those people will be so hard to replace. I just want to wish them very well in their next chapter of their life. And again, to say thank you for um, your service to ABC. I also want to congratulate all of the graduates as they move on. I hope they continue to pursue their education, uh, hopefully at a four year and beyond. Um, uh, it's, it's great to be a lifelong learner. I want to uh, uh, say to Pam and the classified uh, union that next week is classified appreciation week. And I know that um, it would have been very, very difficult to get through the entire COVID year, especially without the classified staff. Um, your work is just, you, 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 can't, you can't put a, a dollar amount on the work that the classified staff continues to do day in and day out. So thank you, Pam, for that. And uh, of course, that's our COVID team back there. Uh, I know when they talk about changes, the governor, the health departments are changing daily. So thank you for, for taking care of that and, and, and taking good care of our, of our college. I wanna say thank you to Samuel and uh, Cameron for selecting to serve at such a young age. Um, we need more young people to, to understand the value in community service. And I hope I'm not leaving anything out. I want to say that I am so excited tonight to welcome Rocio Rivera to this dais. I've had the pleasure of watching this young lady grow up. And Bridget, all I'm going to say to you is watch your seat, young lady, because law school is her next thing so be careful she she will do an amazing job uh, as our uh, student board member so welcome rocio thank you mr buffalo well cameron you probably went through the weirdest year that anybody's ever gone through in your position and congratulations for making it i'm sorry that happened it would have been a lot better to go through a normal year i understand that uh, congratulations to uh, Samuel for a great job that he did, and welcome, Rocio, uh, to the uh, to the board. Uh, I want to also recognize uh, respiratory therapy program got national recognition. That was really cool. My daughter is a graduate of that program. Uh, there was um, one thing said that that I was a little confused on talking about an interim 
president and normally you don't do those kinds of things unless you have something like happened to Dr. Fisher uh, the last time. So the plan here, at least my thinking is we're gonna hire a, a new president as we go through that process and uh, there won't be any interim. Uh, I would also encourage everybody again to get vaccinated because if there's any concerns you have about catching the virus, then the vaccination could be a, a game changer for you. And I think that's the key. Uh, one of the things that uh, I wanna mention is a walk around. I don't know how many of you get a chance to go out on the campus and walk around. The construction projects are really amazing. I walk it just about every day and changes seem to happen every day. And Sage Hall being the, the really starting to take shape. But anyway, uh, try to check those out, and it's uh, and I look forward to fall and, and being fully reopened and having a normal uh, school year. Thank you. Thank you. There is no need to go back into closed session, so we will meet again. The date of our next meeting is June fourteenth, twenty twenty one, and we are adjourned. <coughs>